Okay, now for question number five from uh, P2, June 2019. This is the P2 for the international A-level. Um, a question here, um, a company makes a particular type of watch. The annual profit made by the company from the sales of these watches is modeled by the equation P equals 12X minus X to the power of 3 over 2 minus 120, where P is the annual profit measured in thousands of pounds. That's probably become important later on. And X is the selling price of the watch. All right. According to this model, find using calculus the maximum annual profit. So we know that the profit is given by 12x minus x to the power of 3 over 2 minus 120. Okay, now we want to find the maximum annual profit. So basically what we need to do is to find, this is going to give us a curve. Okay, so we want to find the turning points on this curve. All right, so what we need to do is we need to use calculus to find the gradient function and to find when the gradient is zero. So the gradient function for this will be dp dx, not dy dx, because normally it says y equals, but this is like a real life situation. So the y is replaced by the p, the p stands for the profit. So if you, if you were to draw a graph of this, the y-axis would be p and the x-axis would be the cost, which would be x, the price of the watch. Okay, anyway, so dp dx is equal to, well, we have to multiply by the power. Now remember there's a 1 here that gives you 12. x to the power of 0, which is 1, so it's 12 times 1. And you're going to multiply the power. Remember there's a 1 here, multiply the x, so it's 3 over 2 times minus 1, which is minus 3 over 2 x to the power of, and you take 1 from the power, that becomes a half. And here you have a constant which becomes 0, because it's like x to the power of 0, multiply by 0, the whole thing disappears. So that's dp dx. Now we know that the maximum is when, when dp dx is equal to 0. The maximum is when dp dx is equal to 0. So we've got to equate this to 0. So we have 12 minus 3 over 2 x to the power of a half equals 0. Okay, we can multiply everything by 2 to get rid of the fraction. So we have 24 minus 3x to the power of a half equals 0. And we can divide by 3. So we have 8 minus x to the power of a half equals 0. So we can say x to the power of a half is equal to 8. So x is equal to, and we have to, to get rid of the x to the power of a half, we have to square both sides. So x is equal to 8 squared, which is 64. So that's not the answer to the question. That's just the price of the watch, which will give us the maximum profit. The question doesn't ask us to find the price of the watch. It tells us to find what the actual maximum prof profit is. So we have to take this value of x and substitute back into the original equation. So the profit is going to be, let me just, is going to be 12 times 64 minus, now this actually means the denominator is the root, so it's the square root of x cubed, so square root of 64 cubed, minus 120, and that will give us the, uh, the maximum annual profit. So we have 12 times 64 minus the, cube root, the square root of 64 cubed, 64 cubed, and you're going to have minus 120, now be very quick, careful of when you in your calculator when you get to this stage here. Okay, don't put the minus. You put you make a space first, and then you put the minus. Otherwise, it will be under the square root sign. Okay, and then that equals 136. So p equals 136. But again, we have to be careful here because remember when we looked at this, p stands for the profit measured in thousands of pounds. So the, the, the maximum annual profit, therefore, will be the maximum annual profit is going to be equal to, not 136, but 136,000 pounds. Okay, so if you write 136, you'll definitely lose a mark here. It has to be 136,000 pounds. Okay, so that's the answer to part A. And then it says, 
um, part B says justify also using calculus the pro that the profit that you found is a maximum. So we need to have our first differential uh, in order to do this first. So dp dx was e equal to 12 minus just 12 minus 3 over 2 x to the power of a half. 3 over 2 x to the power of a half. Now, in order for us to justify that this is a maximum, or to work out whether it's a maximum or minimum, uh, we have to work out what's happening to the gradient at that point. So if when x equals 64, it's a maximum, then it will look something like this at the point when x equals 64. It will be, this is where x is equal to 64, and you'll see that it will be turning in this way, opening downwards, basically. And if it was a minimum, then the gradient will be 0, x equals 64, but it will be opening upwards. So we've got to prove that this is the case, that it's a maximum. To prove that that's the case, what we have to do is, we have to see what's happening to the gradient. Now, in a maximum, the gradient is starting off positive, it becomes 0, and then it becomes negative. So the, the rate of change of the gradient is negative, the gradient is decreasing. So if it's a maximum, then d squared p over dx squared will have to be ne uh, negative. If it was a minimum, the gradient starts off negative, becomes zero and becomes positive. So the gradient is actually increasing. So the rate of change of the gradient, when it's greater than zero, then it would be a minimum. So we have to prove that this, when x equals 64, the second differential of this is going to give us something negative. So let's see, when you differentiate 12 becomes zero, you have a half times minus three over two, which is minus three quarters. Um, x to the power of minus a half because you've got to take one from the power so that gives you if we write it in a more easy form to deal with you have minus 3 over 4 and now this is going to come as x to the power of a half down which means the square root of x so we can see when x equals 64 which is when we found our, our turning point when x equals 64 d squared p over dx squared is equal to minus 3 over 4 times root 64. So of course this is going to be a positive value. You have minus 3 over 4 times uh, root 64 is 8. So you have minus 3 over 4h to 32. Okay, so we know that it's a negative value. So as when x equals 64, d squared p over dx squared is less than zero therefore um, the profit of 136,000 pounds is a maximum profit it's a maximum profit okay so a little qualifying statement like that would be useful here all right so uh, one thing to remember that when you find the square root, this means a positive square root. Here, okay, the square root sign is already there. It means a positive square root of x. That's what it means. Anyway, so there we have the answer to question number, what was it, five or six? Five. Question number five. Okay, part A and part B.